Uh, Naomi, do you remember how you first started listening to Hall & Oates? Well, I mean, my earliest memory is definitely the dance routine that you did on stage, you know, out of touch. And I mean, I, I think like the, those songs, that album, which was, I think the Big Bam Boom album is like the first sort of childhood memory. Like those songs are just like almost part of my DNA. Yeah. There's just something that just really spoke to me about them. And I, and it doesn't, I like, there's some music that, you know, you listen to when you were younger that you're like, oh God, you know, but like, I have never stopped loving Hall & Oates, the songs that I know. And I do not claim to be any kind of like a expert. And there's, I have huge, huge gaps. So I think part of the approach of our podcast is like, we're scholars, we're learning and we're like early doctoral students. So we're not like at the end of our, of right. our scholarship. We're like, <laughs> we're so much that I'm just that I'm just beginning, but, uh, but yeah, that, that dance routine to out of touch, yeah, which is, you know, like we called our podcast out of touch for a number of reasons. Like one of it is like a wink and a nod to the fact that we're like 40 something, you know, white ladies. So we are therefore out of touch. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Set Lusting Bruce, your podcast all about Bruce Springsteen, his music, and mostly his fans. I am your host, Jesse Jackson. We are getting off the Bruce Springsteen train tonight, though I'm sure he will come up. Um, and we are going back to another 80s icon. Um, in my series of other podcast hosts joining me, I have Mary Kay and Naomi co-host of Out of Touch, a Hall and Oates podcast. And if I am so thrilled to talk to these two ladies, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. We're glad to be here. Yeah, yeah. we're excited to be here. So uh, I, have, I have been listening to the podcast. Um, I love y'all's banter. I love y'all's themes. Um, I do remember loving Daryl Hall and John Oates. And, and, and uh, so, um, in fact, one of my early episodes, um, like during my first year, was someone who was a huge Daryl Hall and John Oates fan. And he actually joined me and we talked about them a lot, talked about the, um, I guess, Daryl's room, like he did a series of episode, right, podcasts where he did stuff. So uh, I, I'm, I'm thrilled to have this back to visit this great musical duo but i always like to first off give you a chance to introduce yourself so mary Kay, let's start with you tell us a little bit about yourself oh um i live in los angeles california and um i am a writer and so i work at home hence you know i get to wear my pajamas all day long and uh lockdown was not a big change for me um and naomi and i have known each other since we were eight third grade so we've been friends for a long time um i'm a mom i have two teenage kids and um yeah that's about it <laughs> what do you what kind of writer Um, I write books, I write articles, I'm also a grant writer, so I do all kinds of stuff. Okay, very nice. And Naomi, how about yeah. yourself? What's your elevator pitch? My elevator pitch, I'm a, I am like a strange hybrid of a, I'm a medical anthropologist, and that's a branch of cultural anthropology, so it has nothing to do with bones or anything like that. Um, and um, I, kind of, I kind of study like systems and the state and how it relates to science and innovation and public health. Um, and then I'm also a nurse practitioner and I do um, street medicine and uh, social medicine and, um, and addiction medicine. Um, and I also am a mom, I have twins and I live in San Francisco and this uh, extraordinary, uh, extraordinarily liberal bastion, which I love. And so getting an opportunity to talk to um, an individual like yourself from Texas and from Dallas, no less, is, is definitely interesting and exciting and out of, um, you know, out of my usual uh, realm of experience. 
So uh, as my wife likes to say, we are um, blueberries in a field of strawberries. Uh, the, um, I, uh, it, it was interesting because, um, you know, my congressman, it, uh, former President Trump uh, recently, you know, sent out like endorsements for six congressmen and one of them was mine. <laughs> And I was like, and, and he's proud of that. I mean, my congressman is proud of this. Uh, and I was just like, oh, so, um, and so I always, admit, you know, I have, I have two senators and a congressman who could give a S about my thoughts and my feelings, you know, and, and I am very vocal on not only social media, but man, I have their their websites booked, you know, and I'm like, I'm contacting Congressman, contact Senator. And, and I'm always, I roll my eyes because when they respond to me, it's, oh, thank you for telling us what you think, but let me tell you why you're wrong. You think that way and how this is the right way I should do. Right. And I just want to go, oh, so I guess. So thank you. We, uh, I, uh, I, I used to joke about, I'm a Texan. <laughs> That's tough. Yeah. yeah, I'm a Texan who puts beans in his chili, uh, who doesn't own a gun, who believes in a woman's right to choose. Uh, so I, I guess uh, I'm a little bit uncharacteristic of Texans, but I do think there's more of us out here. We're just being buried by others. So thank you for those kind words. Uh, oh. Yeah. I hope you're right, you know, especially with uh, this latest news about the Supreme Court. Go ahead, say Mary Kay. Go ahead, Mary Kay. No, I was just gonna say a bunch of you are probably in hiding. Oh, am I, am I like delayed? I think I might be delayed. Just a slight delay. So uh, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll work through it. Yeah. Uh, so I always like to start. Sorry about that. That's okay. I always like to start at the beginning. So uh, we'll start with you, Naomi, and I guess there's a lot of this together, but talk about where you grew up and what kind of music did your family listen to when you were a little one? Oh, I love that question. Um, I, well, Mary Kay and I both grew up in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, and again, like, you know, you folks in Texas may not have any awareness of this, but us New Mexicans have some grudges against Texans. Um, okay. Texans are not aware of New Mexico at all. Okay. They're not aware, <laughs> but we do exist and, <laughs> and we have grudges. But anyway, from Albuquerque, the big city of Albuquerque, New Mexico, and actually both of my parents when I was growing up, um, were uh, my father was a professor of piano at the University of New Mexico and my mother taught piano and so I grew up with classical music um, and so I um, always grew up and I have a lot of just fondness for like Chopin and, and Bach and Brahms and stuff but I consumed a ton of media from a young young age and I'm proud to say that the very second album I bought was 1999 by Prince and Prince has remained um, the, despite the fact that I do a podcast about Hollow Notes, Prince is like my number one um, favorite musician of all time. And um, I just could never do a podcast about it. But at any rate, um, huge, huge fan of Prince. But yeah, Daryl Hall, John Oates, big fan since, uh, right. since Mary Kay and I met, which is in third grade. And I'll let her tell that, that story. Why couldn't you do a Prince podcast? It's too. It's just, I'm not the right person to do that. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Very nice. Uh, have you seen, did you see Bruce and the East Street Band do their version of Purple Rain? I definitely haven't. And I, and I will look for that. I mean, I, I can tell you more later in the podcast, but I, um, I don't know a lot about Bruce Springsteen. I've tried to like do a little bit of listening in preparation for talking with you tonight, but um, okay. yeah, I will check. I will certainly check that out. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, Prince told the story once on some show yeah. about watching the E Street Band from the backstage and, you know, talked about how much he loved them. So after Prince had died, the E Street Band was touring. And so the band came out and everyone was wearing something of purple color, either a headband, a scarf. 
and uh, they did a version of Purple Rain, and it's very easy to find. You can Google it, and uh, it was um, it was a true great tribute to that. So yeah, check it out, and I'd love to hear what you think on it. That literally gives me chills. I love hearing that story, Jesse. Thank yeah. you. No problem. So Mary Kay, you tell us yeah. what kind of music your parents That's listened to and the secret yes. origin of this bonding. <laughs> um, okay, so I grew up in a house where music was really not a big thing. My parents did not listen to a lot of music. Um, they did. It was like a little bit of classical music here and there. Um, but mostly I got all of my music from my friends and myself and the radio. Um, I had a grandmother who listened to a lot of Johnny Cash, so I listened to some Johnny Cash. Um, but other than that, there wasn't really a lot of music happening in my house. Okay, you guys are frozen. Did I freeze in? We can hear you. You are fine. Okay, good. Just checking. I wanted to make sure I'm like, ah, everybody froze. Um, so anyway, so Naomi and I have this great bond. When we were in third grade and we met, um, we have an ongoing argument back and forth about Number one, the Hall & Oates out of touch dance number that I did in the third grade uh, talent show. And I believe that Naomi was in it with me. She believes she was in the audience. Uh, we have no way of proving this because there are no photos. So that is- uh, And neither of, of our parents were there. Podcast. But <laughs> there's a and neither of our parents were there. Nobody took a photo. So it's, it's, there's no proof and no way to, uh, to figure this out. We're hoping Listen, that if there are any long fellow prairie dogs out there, will find any us on Twitter and tell us that they, <laughs> who could, uh, who could vet this story. Long fellow you know, prairie dogs. Let's go. Call that um, long fellow prairie dogs. So exactly, exactly. But Naomi had a birthday party in third grade, and we actually were talking about this on the Maneater episode that we did recently um, with our friend Alexandra, because uh, we listened to a lot of Prince and we did a lot of dancing. And I can't remember, Naomi, was that the year that you got parachute pants or did you get parachute pants the next year? I got my parachute pants the next year. That was, uh, the next year was the year of, um, yeah, the parachute pants and the break dancing lessons. So I'm very jealous of this story. That's great, that was an awesome year. Yeah, uh, so I'm jealous of this story because um, I grew up in the, my dad was in the army. So we moved around a lot. Like I counted once, I went through like 12 different schools through first through eighth grade. So I, was always jealous of people like in high school that would say, oh, remember in the fourth grade we did this? Because I remembered no one from my elementary schools. I, you know, went to all these different schools. So I, I am I am jealous of that bond for that long, right? That you've known someone in your life through everything else that's gone through that you guys have been friends that long. That's just a beautiful story. Yeah, it's, I think we're really lucky in a way, the other issue, the other part of it is that Mary Kay and I are both only children, that we don't have siblings. And uh, the other person that um, mm -hmm. she was just mentioning, Alexandra was, she's not an only child anymore, but for the first 10 years of her life, she was an only child. And I think <clears throat> for that reason, you know, um, we're almost like each other's siblings. We spent, Mary Kay and I spent so many nights at each other's house, you know, over the years. And, uh, you know, we've had some years of being like less in touch, but but, you know, this is, um, like, I don't have a sibling, but she's definitely like, you know, the closest thing I have to one. She and my other friend, Alexandra. So, yeah. yeah. That's All right. For sure. So we've got parachute pants and Prince sing-alongs and, and dance things. Uh, but you guys mentioned that you found Daryl Hall and John Oates early. So which of you wants to tell that story? <laughs> Uh, Naomi, do you remember how you first started listening to Hall and Oates? Well, I mean, my earliest memory is definitely, you know, the dance, the dance routine that you did. 
on stage, you know, out of touch. And I mean, I, I think like, um, the, you know, those songs, that album, which is, I think the Big Bam Boom album is like the first sort of childhood memory. Um, like those songs are just like almost part of my DNA, you know? Um, yeah. There's just something that just really spoke to me about them. And I, and it doesn't, I like, there's some music that, you know, you listen to when you were younger that you're like, Oh God, you know, but like, I have never stopped loving um, Hall and Oates, the songs that I know. And I do not claim to be any kind of like a uh, expert and there's, I have huge, huge gaps. So I think part of the approach of our podcast is like, we're scholars, we're learning and we're like early doctoral students. So we're not like at the end of our, of our right. scholarship. We're like, <laughs> there's so much that I'm just, you know, um, that I'm just beginning, but, uh, but yeah, that, that dance routine to out of touch, yeah, which is, you know, like we called our podcast out of touch for a number of reasons, you know, like one of it is like a wink and a nod to the fact that we're like 40 something, you know, white ladies. So we are therefore out of touch, you know, um, <laughs> but it's also just a great song. It is a great song. That was my but, first Hall Notes album. And, and also right. That to keep you from becoming out of touch, you know, this is another way the podcast keeps you connected. So yeah. Mary Kay, tell me whose idea was it first that we make this, you know, we get together once a week and talk about a song. I mean, whose idea was the podcast? <laughs> well, so we, I don't know, Naomi and I have talked for years about doing something together and, and we've, you know, joked off and on about many different options, but we happened to be up um, at a writing retreat, the two of us a few months ago. And um, we sort of started talking about Hall and Oates. We, it started out with a conversation about Family Man. No, the song Family Man came on Spotify it, and you had, you didn't know that song. I didn't know Family Man. <laughs> you didn't Man, know no. that song. And it just, you know, this, we were staying at these, a friend's house. It was a beautiful, it was a self-made writing retreat. Yeah. And there was a large dance floor available and we just got crazy. We did. We did. And then we started joking about we should start a podcast where, you know, with Naomi being an anthropologist and me being a writer, us being completely different people, we're like, oh, we should start a podcast and there'll be like this intellectual component to it. And we can, you know, say we're working on our PhD in Oat Studies. And it was like, ha, 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 ha. And then within two hours, it was kind of like we were getting ready to do it. So um, it very quickly went from something that we were joking about to something that we said, well, actually, you know what? I wonder if there is a Hall Notes podcast. And we looked it up and there wasn't. And, and you know, I wonder how is there not, a, you know, like it was it was just kind of, it was this natural thing that happened. It felt very organic when it sort of came together. Um, but yeah, I think mostly we were very surprised that there was not already a Hall Notes podcast because how is that possible? Um, and then we just started the next week and every week since then. Do you, how do you pick the songs that you're going to discuss in either one of you? There are some times where there's been some episodes where I like I already knew what I wanted to do. Like, for example, the um, I can't go for that parentheses, no can do was something I envisioned the, ver the when we were first um, talking about the podcast, because as soon as we started talking about the podcast, we were like, wait, are we going to get sued? Are Hall and Oates going to sue us? <laughs> uh, like, cause I can't go for that. And so we're all like, you know, immediately I'm like, I need to get a lawyer on. I need an IP lawyer. And I happen to know a couple of them. Uh, and uh, so we got one who told us that we can't get sued for the podcast. We're very glad about that. It's um, fair use. or it's like, it's like literary criticism is what she said. So that like, there's some episodes that we know. And I knew also family man early. I, I was like, I definitely want to you know, being somebody who is working in healthcare, and I've always worked with like um, vulnerable populations, you might call them, and like sex workers have been amongst the patients that I've had over the years. So for Family Man, which arguably, like, I do believe there is a sex worker reference in Family Man, you could make different kinds of interpretations, but that's my interpretation. That's my reality about Family Man. And so I knew I wanted to have someone who could speak to like revisiting some of these themes and like speak to like sex work as real work, for example. And um, so that's, I think a, a part of what we try to do is like kind of re-explore these songs from the eighties, you know, put them under 
you know, put them with our 2022 eyes and, and also, you know, with our 80s eyes. And that's kind of how like I approach it. Mary Kay, you, you have a different, or I don't know how your approach is. No, I mean, it's kind of the same thing. Although, you know, we have also, you know, when we initially got together and made a list of things we wanted to talk about, we're like, okay, mustaches are something we definitely <laughs> need to, we need to attack mustaches. And I have a very good friend who runs an agency for stylists out here. So we did a whole episode about mustaches with him, um, which was actually fascinating. Um, and we learned a lot. So we're, we're sort of, it's, we're keeping it loose. Like we're open to it. There's a really interesting guy that um, I met on Twitter, much like yourself. And um, he's like Colin Oates, number one super fan. And so we're going to have him on and he has some stories that he wants to talk about. So it's kind of just becoming what it is. And every episode is a little different and um, it's fun. And we always learn something. Do, do you have sometimes guests have a choice? Like you go, um, you know, are people reaching out and going, hey, you haven't done Kiss of My, Kiss of my List yet. I, can I take that one? Can I join you to talk about that one? Or has that happened yet? Yeah. I mean, that happened with Alexandra, Naomi, yeah? Yeah. It also happened with Paul to a certain degree as well. Yeah. yeah. And then there are some times when there's people who wanted like where we've kind of like railroaded people that they were like, we had an idea and they're like, but I want to do this song. And we're like, well, you know, uh, we, like that was the case with Jen Cash and I can't go for that uh, mm -hmm. song. She wanted to do Rich Girl. Yeah. And we're like, well, but we have a specific vision for this episode. Um, yeah. How, yeah. How, how do you do it? So um, what I do is I basically beg, borrow and steal Springsteen fans to join me. And then I, I have a pretty set agenda. Hey, talk about growing up. When did you first discover Bruce? What about him spoke to you? Uh, let's talk about favorite songs and albums. And then we end up going on tangents. Uh, so um, it's a good formula. Yeah, I, it, it, it tends to be, um, you know, and I get a, I get pushback from people that say, well, I, I don't have anything special to share. You know, I haven't seen Bruce hundreds of times, right. you know, I, I, you know, and I always preface the question. I said, you know, I don't think the amount of times you've seen a performer live is a fair barometer of how big of a fan you are. Uh, yeah. I know people that are massive Bruce Springsteen fans that have never had the chance to see him live. I know others that have seen because of when they were born and where they were born. They've seen him 300 times. You know, yeah. it, it doesn't Wait, matter. Is there really someone who's seen Bruce Springsteen 300 times? That's oh, yeah. not physically pop? What? Oh, easy. What? Yeah, that's yeah. like a part-time job. Well, yeah. you think about it. If you discovered Bruce like in 75, right? When he first yeah. started. And so let's see, 85, 95. There was promise to be no math. That's 85, 95, <laughs> right? So, you know, he's been performing 50 years. So, yeah. and if you're living the East coast and let's say, you know, he'll do 10 nights back in the seventies or eighties, 10 nights in Madison Square Garden, you know, let's say you go to eight or nine of those shows. Then if you live there, you can go to, you know, you can see him in Jersey, you can go down to Philly, you can see, you know, so if you live in the East coast and you became a fan early enough, it was, it's easy to get that many shows. Yeah. Well, it's interesting too. I've noticed we have a couple of people that I interact with on social media yeah. who are crazy, crazy, I mean, not crazy in a bad way, but like yeah. insane, like lovers yeah. of all the notes. Yeah. And I've noticed, you know, through following them on social media, there's one who's been to every single Daryl Hall show that he's done so far this tour. Yeah. She's like going town to town and going to every single show. Yeah. So she's been to so many Hall and Oates shows. It's unbelievable. She posts her playbills and yeah. I guess we'll call them playbills, but you know, she yeah. posts all of her stuff <laughs> and it's super interesting. It's really interesting. So what's curious is I don't know enough about him. Like, does he like my my title of my podcast comes from the premise that Bruce uh, changes his set list almost every night. Mm -hmm. And so and maybe about 60 percent is the same, but it's not in the same order. And that other 40 percent, he switches things out and every once in a while he'll pull out you know a pretty obscure song 
And so as people are posting their set list, you start become set lusting like, oh my God, I can't believe he's doing this song. Why, yeah, yeah. why aren't I there? So that's where the name of the podcast came versus okay. after I'd been doing this two years, someone said, well, why didn't you call it Jackson Cage? Oh, now you tell me, right? <laughs> that's the next one. That's yeah, the next that's one. The next one. Yeah. So, other- yeah. So I don't know if, 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 if John changes up his set list enough, uh, but you know, when Bruce did the river tour a few years ago and the first part of the leg, he did the river in full from beginning to end. And then the, they took a break and then they did kind of a mixture. And so two thirds of the concerts was the same every night. And I went to four of those. So, oh, wow. yeah. And, and people ask like, well, the songs I really like on the river, I still really like. And the songs I went, eh, I still go, eh. So yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so I will preface this. Uh, as I said, it, you know, the amount of times you've seen an artist does not share your barometer. Have, have you guys seen the boys play? And I'll start with you, Naomi. Yeah, well, I was just about to say that um, I am definitely like, I, I love Daryl Hall and John Oates, but I am in no way, shape or form a super fan. Yeah. Not that I, because I, 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 I do think that implies something and it's more like, it's more like this, like, <clears throat> it's just, they're a part of my life. Yeah. I don't, I'm not a huge concert person, so I have never seen them. I have never seen them. I haven't seen, I have seen Prince, but I, don't, I haven't seen, I'm not like a huge concert goer. Mary Kay is a much bigger concert goer than I am. However, we have tickets to see Daryl Hall in San Francisco on May 14th. Yep. yep. And so that is coming up and I am extremely excited. Yeah, that's very exciting. I, you know, I grew up not going to concerts. My parents didn't take me to concerts. I didn't go to a lot of shows growing up. Um, and so as I got older, like now I go to a ton because I have teenagers, I go to concerts constantly. Um, but I actually didn't see Hall & Oates until uh, it was about five years ago. They played here at the Hollywood Bowl. And that was a lot of fun. It was really, really fun to see them. Um, and, you know, it's like exactly what you think it's going to be. And, and you go and you're outside and you're dancing, and you're having fun. And I actually, my only wish about that show was that they played longer. I felt like it went by too fast. Um, and then they kind of haven't really been playing since then, you know, pandemic and whatnot. So that, I remember it's funny because that tour, they came to the Bay Area and it was actually my plan. They were playing like it might have been in my mind. And I might be making this up. I'm sure <laughs> Google could tell us whether or not it's true. But I had a plan for my birthday and the birthday party was going to involve going to see Hollow Notes and going to the, a water park. And it was all happening in Concord, which is in the East Bay. And I was like, this is happening and then something happened. I can't say what. I don't know if it was Hall and Oates. I don't know if it was me, but the whole thing never happened. But I'm, you know, and then we, what we have learned, and what we learned partly in the Jen Cash episode was the times that they've got, been together and the times that they've been apart. And sometimes it has been, they've come back together for financial reasons, you know, um, because of yacht payments coming due, et cetera, et cetera. Like, and then, you know, sometimes you need your own, you know, you need your space, but they are coming together again. And we were debating they, <clears throat> the first stop on this tour, maybe it's the only one is this kind of obscure town in Nevada. So we were ultimately yeah. like, Sparks, are we Nevada. really going to drive way out there to go to Sparks? Is that where it was? Yep. I don't know where that is, but I bought tickets. So we're going. Wait a second. And- you got the tickets? <laughs> I did. I what? Wait, is this in October? I did. It's in October. So oh God, I blacked that out because we were drinking that weird absinthe drink that night. We were drinking absinthe <laughs> that night, but we, um, yes, I bought tickets. And, um, so, you know, and if we can't go, I'm sure there is someone that listens to the podcast that would love to take our tickets, but, um, yeah, it's in a very random place. I, I'm going to guess it's near Reno. That's I'm making that up, but that's where I, in my brain, that's where it is. So I forgot. Okay. We're probably going to have to like stay in a casino. It's going to be, it's going to be a whole thing. It's I'm really be- glad you asked Jesse because I forgot about this plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks for that. Um, I, I'm now Googling to see our, are either one of them coming anywhere close so that I can go and then be a guest correspondent on your podcast. Right. Like, yes. Hey, yes. So um, 
do you know, um, you mentioned it being short. Is it a typical 90 minute, a lot of greatest hits songs? It was a really, yeah, it was a very tight set. I think there was a lot more um, transition than I was used to. You know, you go to a lot of concerts and it's kind of like hit, 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 you know, this song, this song, this song, yeah. this song. And there was a lot of like, wow, well, what a, what a, wow, between <laughs> every song, you know, yeah. which is great. But I was kind of like, let's go, let's go. You've got so many, like there, there were so many songs I wanted to hear. And I got to hear a lot of them but Out of Touch was not one of them, which made me very sad. And um, so it was it was good. There was, there was a decent amount of hits. I would have liked for it to be just a really crammed 90 minutes, but I'm sure, I mean, they've been playing for 50 years. At a certain point, they need to have some freedom to just freestyle it. You know, yeah. um, during that River tour, my son, who at the time, I guess, 28, 27, 28, um, had never gone to a Bruce show. And um, to tell you how much he loved me, uh, WrestleMania was happening that night in Dallas, Texas, at the Dallas, Texas, you know, the Jerry World. And yep. he didn't. He drove to Oklahoma City with his dad to go see Bruce. Aww. And uh, so um, we... The next morning, um, we're in the car driving home, and I hit record on my phone to do, you know, like, hey, you know, and and he said, um, he said, you've got to really know what you're doing, because Bruce doesn't play between songs, like he ends a song, and then the next thing you know is three, two, one, and he's in the next song. Yeah. Um, and so they tended I, because they've done this so long and so often um he really liked it the other thing he brought up is that bruce's tends to uh kevin is his guitar tech and bruce throws his guitar like for the super bowl you know there there's a scene where he throws his guitar during the super bowl halftime and kevin catches it wow. and chris said i wish the cowboys receivers would catch as well as bruce's guitar <laughs> guy he says the cowboys would be a lot better um mary yeah. Kay, you mentioned you have teenagers and they're you're going to a lot of shows what are you going to see with your youngins as uh, we stay down south <laughs> with my youngins uh we most recently went to coachella a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago, um, okay. which was a lot of fun. Um, we went and saw Billie Eilish before that. Um, we are looking at getting tickets to Lil Nas X, which I'm actually very, very excited about. Um, yeah, we go to all kinds of things. We go, uh, gosh, what was the thing we went to before Billie Eilish? We went, well, we're going to get tickets to the weekend coming up. Um, yeah, we go to all kinds of things. And, it, and it's a lot of fun. You know, it's funny because my husband is a musician and he uh, was always kind of a music snob in, a, in our early relationship, you know, only guitar music, only alternative, only, you know, very specific, like kept our CDs separate because he didn't want people thinking he was listening to salt and pepper or whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it was, and then, but as we've had kids and we go to these shows, you know, here he is at Justin Timberlake, here he is at, you know, Harry Styles, here he is at all of these shows and and having a lot more appreciation for kind of pop music and and how fun it is. So um so yeah, there's a there's a you know, and my kids grew up listening to Hollow Notes because yeah. they call it my Sunday morning playlist. Yeah. So whenever I'm doing coffee and pancakes on Sunday morning, I'm listening to Hollow Notes. That's awesome. That's great. You know, you talked about the pop um my wife and I went to Louisville, Kentucky to see Bruce perform. And um, we were staying at a hotel that was really close to the, um, the arena. And they're just, you know, we pull up and there's just cars everywhere, you know, and the valet is going on. And so we're like, oh, and he says, oh, uh, Justin Bieber is performing tonight. And I said, oh, uh, I said, well, we're here. For the yeah, we're here for the <laughs> Bruce show two nights later bruce is going to play two nights you know later and uh we we decided there probably was a fair amount of 
okay, I'm taking you to Justin Bieber here. <laughs> and now then you're going to either stay in the hotel or you're coming to see Bruce yep. with me. So they knocked out both of them, which I think is pretty awesome. That's pretty great. That's smart on their part, actually, to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, before we hit record, Naomi, you were talking a little bit about, you know, and you've mentioned a little bit, this is, this is a search for, um, I, and I don't want to overthink it, but this is, you're not, this is not an intellectual treaty breaking apart. You guys are a fun podcast, but you do take a, um, art, not a creative and artistic, almost educational bent on talking about the songs. Tell me a little bit about that, Naomi, and, and then I want to hear your thoughts too, Mary Kay. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, what I was saying before, um, we got started was about, there's this, you know, anthropologist named Joe Dumit at, um, UC Davis, who I really like a lot. He, he has this sort of way of thinking about things that he calls worlding that idea that you can kind of learn about everything through one small object, for example, a coffee cup. And so, you know, that sort of the way I think about the podcast is we can both like learn about the world of hollow notes, and then we can sort of learn about the world through hollow notes. And so like, part of the part of a lot of going back to nostalgia and the things you liked as a kid is like seeing like what they meant to you but also kind of looking at them again you know with these fresh eyes and like the eyes of experience now and sort of post me too and 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 things like that you know especially um I you know having kids my kids are I have twins that are 13 and so you know there's been times when I've wanted to show them some like have them listen to songs see media from that I enjoyed when I was their age and then they're like what are you talking about? Like, this is horrible, you know? And I'm like, oh, you know, how, let's, let's, let's think about that, you know? Um, so I feel like, you know, uh, there's, there's endless ways to approach the world and just approaching the world with like curiosity and humor is the way that I like to approach the world and hollow notes is no exception to that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, we both definitely are curious minds, uh, Naomi, clearly much more intellectually so than myself, but it's, I, you know, I love to learn new things. I always have, like, I'm always taking random classes or, or learning how to do strange things. And so it's been really fun to go back and look at these songs. Cause, and oftentimes, you know, we'll pull the lyrics up for a song and several times I've discovered that, yes, I do sing these songs incorrectly and have been for years yes. because when we were kids, there were no lyrics. You couldn't pull them sure. up on the no. internet. So you're like, sure. It's kiss on my lips. Oh, yeah. it's list. Okay. Kiss on my list. You know, yeah. um, yeah. as one of our, our previous guests mentioned, um, but we learn, we've learned all kinds of things about G.E. Smith, about, you know, guest artists that play on their albums, about sort of the inspiration for some of these songs, about how much they sing about capitalism and, and use sort of like women as symbols of capital. It's, it's, it's been really interesting. Um, so we adore them as humans and we love their music, um, but it's also been fun to kind of dig into it a little bit. Are there... Well couple things um sometimes looking back like um you know one of bruce's hits from born in the usa is you know i'm on fire you know and the lyric is hey little girl is your daddy home did he go and leave you all alone in a different context that's some scary ass lyrics right yeah, yeah. it's a little disturbing it's yeah. a little like who is this guy and what's his deal yeah yeah uh and and actually you know a lot of chris a lot of bruce's songs that um you know little girl is a phrase he uses often and you know and so i have two really good friends um that do that did a Bruce Springsteen sings the alphabet and they went through every Bruce Springsteen song in alphabetical order talking about each one oh, wow. and so um a lot of fun you know and so and they talk about that in you know context you know little girl I want to marry you uh you know that in now you know with a context it, it could be very different um 
Yeah, Tough. it's funny. Oh, sorry. It's funny yeah. that you mentioned that. I actually had a very heated debate in a, in a writing seminar that I'm in right now the other yeah. night because one of the men wrote something and he was talking about him. He's like, yeah, you know, you know, she's a good girl. She's a character. She's a good girl. And, and everyone in the class is like, how old is this person? He's like, oh, she's like 45. And they're like, she's not a good girl. She's a woman. You can't yeah. talk about women and call them good girls. Like, yeah. and he's like, I don't know. What's the problem? Like, I'm not saying she's a bad girl, although this other character is a bad, she's a yeah. bad girl. It's like, ah, it was this incredibly long conversation and he could not wrap his brain around it. He just yeah. did not make sense. You know, yeah. we grew up and that was okay. You could say that back yes. then, but not so much now. Yeah. Um, I, I'm a, I have a bad habit of, because I picked this up, you know, of instead of saying, and, and I've changed where I now go circle of trust, but growing up, I go, okay, among just this girls, you know, to kind of talk about, this is something that, you know, we're, we're, we're bearing our, I had a friend who worked uh, with someone from the Japan that would say, I'm opening our Kapona, right. But, you know, you would say, okay, well, among just us guys or girls, you know, we'd say right. that. And, and now that I've gotten, well, circle of trust to try to be a little more. Uh, Naomi, I wanted to share one thing with you because I, um, I, I tend to, tell a lot of stories and um so i was working for a company and a private equity firm bought us and so there was a kickoff meeting everyone was meeting you know the people from private equity and the owner of the private equity term says hey we really like your office but we're going to have to buy you a ping pong table because we have a ping pong table in every company we own he says we have one in ours and like we, if you need to, you know, kind of blow off steam, we play ping pong. And sometimes when we have a heated debate, we'll actually go to the ping pong table and the winner will, that's the decision we'll make. Like, okay. So um, after the meeting breaks up and, you know, there's cookies and punch and everyone's talking around and meeting. And so I go up to the guy and I go, hi, I'm Jesse Jackson. Oh, nice to meet you, Jesse. I, I, I've heard about you. And I've heard all the good things about your customer service team. I said, oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. I said, um, I said, you mentioned a ping pong table. I said, I was just reading in Bruce's biography that at one show back in the 70s, there was a ping pong table backstage and the band started playing. And when it was time to go on stage, two of the E Street band members were still playing ping pong. And when they got on stage and started to play music, they looked and they realized they were missing a couple band members. And so two things happened from that. One, to this day, the band kind of all gets in a circle before they go on stage and kind of do a miniature, you know, mantra or prayer. And two, ping pong tables are banned from the backstage of the E Street Band. Yeah. And so my CEO looks at me and he goes, you truly can find a Bruce Springsteen story for any situation, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story. I love that. I, I have so many thoughts about that. Uh, I love ping pong, although I'm very bad at it. Um, mm -hmm. But... <clears throat> But that's great. Of course, it makes me think of, you know, and I, I was like here in San Francisco, it's sort of like the tech, you know, center of the right. world. The ping pong table is this sort of like notorious feature of like when uh, the offices were, were open for like Google and Twitter and all these big yeah. headquarters are just trying to make them so much fun where you never, ever, ever want to go home. Right. Um, but now, of course, everyone tries to work from home and it's exactly successful. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's great. So anyway, I looked through Springsteen versus a copy cup. I, I have a Springsteen, you know, so that's, that's hilarious. Um, what's, um, what's future plans for the podcast? What do you guys want to do next? Oh, okay. I mean, well, one of the things we're talking about doing, and Naomi could talk more to this, um, is we really want to start getting into sampling and sort of, you know, people who've used uh, Hall and Oates riffs for all mm -hmm. kinds of things. Um, you know, like we discovered that, um, there is, if you take, I can't go for that. No, can do listen to it and listen to Billie Jean immediately afterwards. 
you'll hear like very similar things happening. And then it was actually Michael Jackson went to Daryl Hall and was like, Hey, I love this. Can I use this? And they were like, sure, go ahead. So there's a lot of things like that, that have happened and especially moving into hip hop and Naomi actually um, has somebody we're hoping to have on soon to sort of talk about that. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, like one of the arcs I want to follow is this sort of question about blue eyed soul and this question of, you know, um, like, like cultural appropriation and sort of white people doing soul music and all the kinds of moments of history where, um, you know, from Elvis to wherever, where like white people have kind of like taken on and borrowed something and like taken the credit, gotten the credit and, you know, these, the kind of different charts that existed up until even the eighties, you know? Um, and so I, we've begun to talk about that a little bit and I have this arc in my head and we do have a couple of, you know, a couple of people sort of lined up um, about sort of talking about that question. And, and, you know, we had an opportunity a couple of weeks ago to talk with a comedian, but who's somebody who has um, a lot and he's a writer, but somebody who's uh, made us a, uh, a subspecialty in talking about the difference between um, singing groups versus boy bands. So that was one, one way we kind of talked about that. But, um, but yeah, as Mary Kay said, like, and this is just kind of talking about the near future. Like there is, uh, there's a lot of really great, I love hip hop. You know, I'm a big hip hop fan. Um, and there's a, there's a lot of great hollow out samples. So we want to kind of, you know, talk about this whole sort of full circle. Like we know hollow notes, um, were, they kind of got together because of the temptations. They met each other because of sort of mutual fandom. And then they've, you know, there's this relationship with David Ruffin and Eddie Kendrick and sort of all these different musicians that played with those, you know, <clears throat> in that scene. And um, so kind of like the full circle is sort of like then hip hop coming and like borrowing from Hall & Oates is, is sort of the full circle of that little journey. And, you know, the longer term, it's like, I don't know about you, Jesse, but like, we we're having fun and I think that's kind of what keeps us continuing to do that it's an opportunity for us to hang out virtually we don't live in the same city mm -hmm. you know to you know to meet and engage with different people and I think um you know when it stops being fun we'll probably stop doing it but so far it hasn't stopped being fun and interesting and uh I am like a <clears throat> in I, I'm kind of like a b student in this podcast like I don't want to do like a ton of preparation, but I don't do none. You know, just yesterday yeah. I told Mary Kay, I was like, man, I'm going to like fail this course with Jesse Jackson tonight. Cause I've like done <laughs> nothing. But then, you know, today I was like, look, all right, starting at five. I'm like, let me get a little bit. Let me listen to Bruce Springsteen. Let me listen yeah. to some of his episodes. Like, let yep. me do a little research, you know? So it was like cliff notes and, and I haven't done deep study, but, um, but I, I, I wanted to be a tiny bit prepared. Well, I, I think you've done well. I would give you both <laughs> solid A's. So hopefully I, I, you know, there was only one piece of homework, uh, you know, in the podcast. And I, I always, by the way, I always worry about that. And I have had that a couple of times where the guest has said, yeah, I didn't listen to that. And I'm like, okay, let me. I did that. Um, we up. both did. The, we are both oh, yeah. like that Good. kind of student. I we listened to the song. I read the lyrics many times. I had okay. a lot of thoughts about the lyrics. Good. So, All right. Well, I yeah. can't wait that. All right. Yeah. Um, is there anything I should have asked you to that I haven't? Yeah. Of course, but like I can't think of what it is. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's a very, very good question. Um, and yeah, while you're thinking, know. I'll tell you the story. So I had a guy on and it was it was a good episode. You know, we had a nice time, um, but it was like 30, 40 minutes and he was out of stories. And so we kind of wrapped it up. And um, so after I hit record, you know, I stopped recording. I'm like, oh, thank you for being on the podcast. I hope you had fun. Oh, I did. He said, the next time I'm on, I'll tell you when I got drunk with the E Street Band. <laughs> <laughs> excuse me you do realize this is a bruce springsteen podcast right you're like okay hold on i'm just gonna push record real quick yeah. right now. I, I, and, and so uh so i i always think of that now because i always like um you know i didn't want i always worry that there'll be a oh i had a good story but i, I forgot to do it so that's why i started adding that question yeah so yeah um i don't have any hidden bruce springsteen stories okay. at all all right so um i 
I will, yeah, thank you. Any final thoughts before I get to the Mary question? Mary Kay, you first. Um, you know, I actually really, I, no. Okay. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I was going to say a bunch of things. I was, no, it's funny because I was just thinking about how I spent um, an enormous amount of time uh, a couple weeks ago when we talked about doing this, searching for like, Bruce Springsteen hollow notes. I'm like, I'm going to find a video of them doing something together. Yeah. I'm going to find a video of them in a car on a song yeah. doing, there's going to be a Bruce Springsteen covering a hollow notes song, hollow notes yeah. covering a Bruce Springsteen song. Did it, you know, zip. Yes. None. We are the so, world, I guess, is the closest. We are closest. the world. Yeah. The world the, yeah. Closest. Um, and they, they were, were inducted into, um, the hall of fame. Of fame. So time. they probably were on stage the same time or something. But was it the yeah. same year? Oh, yeah. look at that. Aren't you okay. clever? So yeah, there's, there's things, but then there was part of me that then, you know, where my brain goes because of how our podcast works. So I'm like, Hmm, are they not friends? Why are they not friends? Should they be <laughs> yeah. friends? Like, is did something happen? Is there like a thing? Is there so a story? Where did, where did, uh, Daryl Hall and John Oates grow up? Pennsylvania. Okay. So not, not Pennsylvania, Jersey, that's not too far. Yeah, no. yeah, and Daryl Hall's house is, you know, Daryl Hall has a reality show uh, 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 live from Daryl's house. And you probably do know that he did have someone from the E Street Band come and play in one of the episodes um, yeah. not too long ago. But oh, not okay. Bruce. Not, no. I, I think he's not going to get Bruce to come to his house. Like, well, why not? not? He's I mean, Daryl Hall. No. That's right. <laughs> but Hey, uh, he, uh, Bruce and uh, John uh, Mellencamp, you know, hung out together. Right. So there we go. Just recently. All right. How about you, Naomi? Any final thoughts before we get to the Mary question? Well, you know, what I was thinking about, sort of thinking about along those lines of what, you know, Mary Kay was talking about was um, like partly paying attention to Bruce Springsteen a little bit more in the last couple of days. Like got me really like appreciating that he is like a lyricist and a songwriter and a poet. And, uh, yeah. and I, that, I think, you know, he would have, um, you would think he'd find some kinship with John Oates, who really just, you know, thinks of himself really as a writer and a songwriter. Yeah. And, um, but I, I do wonder, you know, I, I again, huge fan of Hall and Oates, but I wonder if Bruce Springsteen thinks of himself on another level. I just, I, that would be I'm my, gonna, but my, I, I think he's like, I'm thing. doing something. I don't know. I don't want to start controversy, but like, well, no, I, I don't, that's an interesting thought. Like uh, I know, there is a story that I have read multiple places that um, back in the 70s, um, Billy Joel, Barry Manilow, and Bruce Springsteen are all having coffee. They walk into a bar. This sounds yeah, like a they joke. Walk, right, yeah, they walk into a bar. <laughs> and that uh, Barry Manilow had said, um, you know, I think I'll end up being the most successful. And and roll and my he, eyes for a second. And he, okay. and he told the story, right? That it wasn't against Billy or Bruce's, but just he knew very like I do pop. I do very, very, you know, unique pop. And and so therefore I have a better chance to have commercial success than either one of these guys. Right. Um, you know, I think of um I have a of, of a writer that I admire, a blogger named Mark Evanier that lives in the Los Angeles area. He's worked on Garfield and Friends and everything, and he does a pretty good blog. And he um, he he did a blog about seeing Barry Manilow in Vegas. Can, I, can we just pause for a second? I like how like people, when they talk about LA and their friends connect to things, will sometimes drop names, but I like how Garfield just got dropped right there. Like, yes, oh, yeah. he works on Garfield. <laughs> Well, and the reason why is because I, I trying to give some context because because uh, I mean his best known is he does he writes Gru, the adventurer with uh, oh. Sergio Ardanis as the artist. So, but most people who aren't comic fans would not know Gru the Wanderer. Uh, so uh, Mark worked on um, Welcome Back, Cotter. Uh, he's done. He he tells great stories. I, my one of my favorite stories he told is. Um, he met Dick Van Dyke in a elevator and he started telling him and he said, Dick Van Dyke stopped him and says, you saw, you saw the Dick Van Dyke show and you thought if you grew up to be a TV writer, 
you got to marry Mary Tyler Moore and hang around with fun people like, you know, Sally and him. Yes. He says, you'd be surprised how many people tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yep. Mark is talking about Barry Manilow and how, um, and, um, you know, the Beach Boys have never won a Grammy either. Um, really? Yeah. Brian okay. Wilson. Yeah. The Beach Boys have never won a Grammy. They've, uh, um, second pick is being planned. Yeah. yeah. And so, yep. Um, and so, and Mark is telling the story. He says, a couple was talking about they fell in love with Barry's music and how it's been the soundtrack of their lives and it's made, brought them joy. And he said, if I was a musician, hearing someone say your music has brought me joy and, you know, brought my significant other together, that would worth more to me than all the Grammys in the world. Yep. Um, and the other thing he says is when I'm hanging around with musicians, they'll say, oh, Barry Manilow, that stuff's easy. He's, he's easy. And he goes, you know, he says, I always want to say, you know, I really admire you that you didn't take the easy route and became a millionaire, that you were so, you know, just so convinced, right? Yeah. So I think sometimes that Hall & Oates, it's pop. It's, well, it's just easy, right? They just do radio hits. Do you know how right. freaking hard that is yes, to so write hard. a good pop song? So hard. Yeah. And, so and it hard. is kind of, it is weird. They've never won a Grammy. It's crazy. I mean, yeah, it is crazy. I heard you guys talking about it. Yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah. All right. So uh, I hope that if you are a fan of Out of Touch, you've enjoyed this episode. Thank you for listening. Um, I think uh, Mary Kay and Naomi have made you very proud. They are wonderful guests, and I will have them back anytime. Oh, thank uh, you. Thank I will. You. I've got to figure out a way to get myself on your podcast. Yeah, uh, you can figure so, that out for sure. Yeah. Figure that out. All right. So uh, I end every podcast with a Mary question. Uh, Jay mm -hmm. Armstrong is a recently retired um, high school English teacher. Um, he has a new book out. Um, Bedtime Stories for the Living, uh, talking about his, um, he has an illness and he's dealing with it. It's forced him to retire. But when he was the English teacher, his seniors would spend two days in honors English breaking apart Thunder Road. They would look at all the lyrics. They would talk about the themes. They would talk about the imagery of the book. They'd compare it to Robert Frost, Road Not Taken, oh. and other poems. Yeah. And at the end of the two days, he asked his class, does Mary get in the car? So that's how I end every podcast. Naomi, I'll start with you. Your question is, does Mary get in the car at the end of Thunder Road? Uh, well, I, you know, I did have the heads up. You were going to ask that question. I absolutely love this setup about the honors English class. And, it, and you know, reading this the song lyrics yesterday, I mean, it's a very poetic song, you know. And I think to answer that question, you, you know, you have to go into the mind of Bruce Springsteen a little bit. And is he a romantic? Is he a tragic figure? You know, and I have, um, I can't, I can't claim to have gone into his mind or to know him at all. Um, I feel like there's two kinds of things that I see at work in his lyrics. And in, in, there's an aesthetics, like he's creating his lyrics sort of create this like aesthetic vision, right? And then there's sort of like, you know, kind of the message. And I feel like um, in the aesthetic vision, she's going to get in the car, you know, and then that's sort of like him painting the picture of like, this is how the scene that you want to see. But on the other hand, I feel like, you know, the kind of bleaker, more realist is like, she's not, she's not getting in there. She's not getting in there. So that's, I'm going to go with, she's not getting in. Okay. Good. Mary Kay. Um, so I, I looked at it um, a little bit differently than Naomi did. I looked at it as putting myself in Mary's shoes, if I were Mary. And, you know, it's funny because as poetic as his words are, you know, he says things like, you're not that pretty, but like, you're fine. Yeah. And oh, that, <laughs> oh, that was so harsh, dude. Oh you ain't a beauty, <laughs> you're ain't a beauty, but hey, you're, you're all right. right. You're you know, all right. By the way, and, um, you know, um, supposedly um uh the oh damn i'm gonna draw a blank um 
continue. I'll insert this later. Okay. okay. You remember just, just yes, letting... I will. Right. Um, so I put myself in her shoes and I'm like, okay, there's this guy he's outside. He's singing me this song about how I'm like moderately good looking and kind of interesting, but he's also kind of calling me promiscuous and saying that like, I've been disrespected by men in the past. So he's not really like, is he into me? Is he not into me? But it's so poetic. And I had this vision of this just like Uber, um, you know, Bruce Springsteen type guy, right? Bandana in the pocket and the jeans and the boots. And he's super foxy and he's out there and he's saying all of these things. And, and even though she's kind of catching these words and going like, wait, what did you just say? I think at the end of the day, Mary seems like a fun gal. And I think that she, I think she got in the car. Very nice. <laughs> Julia Roberts has said that she, that's a description of her. You're in a beauty, but hey, you're all right. Uh, so um, I will send you guys both links. Um, there was a writer who wrote a funny column, Mary's side of Thunder Road. And oh. it is like, um, you know, uh, you know, yes, I'm still living with my mom. Do you know how hard it is to get a job? You know, anyway, it's, it's, it's really yes. funny. And yes. so uh, a good friend of mine, I, I reached out to the writer and I said, would you mind if I dramatize this? And he said, no, not at all. And so I had a, uh, a friend of mine read the column and then I split it up between Thunder Road. And so you hear Mary's version with Bruce singing uh, and it's, it's pretty funny. Um, cool. Yeah, um, the other sign is um, there is a another podcast that's made me think a little bit of both of y'all's um, uh, again, not, you know, not again. And um, it's a husband and wife who are both college professors who have a three year old and they break apart children videos from a as if it was a college course because they, <laughs> they would go they go crazy because they've had to watch spongebob for the 50th time oh <laughs> and so she was on the podcast and she had never heard the song had did not listen to the song she just read the lyrics and she said oh my god if he gets in the car he's gonna kill her and he, he wrote this <laughs> long breakup and she's yeah. like you're you're never gonna want me on the podcast again no I want you to come every week and break apart one of his songs like they're right. a thriller so right. that's great no um, we used to do that with kids shows all the time you know I'd yeah. set up these backstories for who these parents are and who these kids yeah. are and like what their problem is and yeah. it was how I entertained myself as I yeah. got through shows yes absolutely uh this has been so much fun. I, I just appreciate y'all's time. This was a joy. I hope you guys had fun. Um, tell uh, my listeners how to find you guys. Oh, um, well, Out of Touch, a Hollow Notes podcast is pretty much everywhere you listen to podcasts at this point. Um, Apple, Spotify, uh, Google, everywhere, um, web versions, you name it. And um, we have a website, hollownotespodcast.com. And um, we are on Twitter at hollownotespod and Instagram at hollownotespodcast. Thank you guys for spending time with me. Uh, I had a blast. Oh, yeah. um, you're welcome anytime. I, I just, if you just want to visit, we don't have to record. We can just visit. Um, <laughs> Listeners, go check out this podcast. You will smile. You will enjoy. Um, go grab some Daryl Hall and John Oates music and it will make you smile. Go get vaccinated. Yes. Go get boosted. Um, and let's yes. try to be kind to each other because really that's the only way we're going to get through this. Thank you, Mary Kay. Yes. Thank you, Naomi. Thank you, listeners. Thank we'll talk you. to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. This podcast would not be possible without the generous support of my patrons. I want to give a special shout out to Mary Thomas, Terry Smith, Bella Pori, John Munson, Dale Hozak, Andrew Goddard, Stephen Malio, Anna Lynn, Betsy Hodges, Holly Mack, Chris Bloom, Captain America, and Crystal Carroll. I appreciate you guys so much and thank you for the support. And if you want a shout out on the podcast 
you can be in Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Let me hear from you. Doing a podcast at times can be a one-way conversation, and I hate that. So please let me know what you like and don't like about the work I'm doing. You can reach the podcast via email at setlustingbruce at gmail.com. The show is on Twitter, at setlustingbruce, and my personal Twitter is at jessejacksondfw. We have a website, www.setlessingbruce.com. From there, you can find links to other Springsteen podcasts as well as other music-themed podcasts. We have a page devoted to our own SLB All-Star Band. These are guests who have been on the podcast more than three times. There is a link to our store where you can purchase Set Lessing Bruce shirts as well as a Mary Question t-shirt. There is a link to our Patreon page where you can sign up to help support the podcast financially. We have different levels and different rewards based on your support. If you don't have any extra cash, and right now who does, you can support the podcast by subscribing via your favorite podcast player and leaving us a review. The more reviews we have, the easier it is for people to find us. And please tell a friend about the podcast, especially if they love Bruce or music, because it will make a difference. You just heard the fun talking, hard rocking, music loving, album ranking, fan thinking, joy spreading, lyric reading, story sharing podcast that is the one, the only, Set Listening Bruce. The theme for Set Listening Bruce was written by David Rosen, used by permission. Okay. Are we welcome yes. on the Doctor Who podcast? Because I have to tell you that that's actually why I was like, that was like what Mary Kay was like, hey, what about this podcast? And I'm like, I don't know. Oh, he's a fan of Doctor Who? Yes, I'm in. <laughs> oh, so, okay. That, yes, I, we will set up, we'll have a whole just discussion. Who's your doctor? Well, I have to say that we're only, I'm watching this with my kids because one of my kids doesn't watch much TV. And so it's one of the only things we've been able to find. So we are, yeah. we're far, far, far behind. Okay. Um, but I'm a da- I'm David Tennant. So we, we've only done Christopher Eccles and David Tennant and Matt Smith. We're okay. at the end of Matt Smith. Okay. Um, and I have, a, I have some memories of the older doctors from when I was right. a kid, um, but I'm a David Tennant um, a person so far. Who's your favorite companion as Mary Kay is now bored? <laughs> Well, uh, <laughs> not at all. We are tied. We're tied in our family between Donna and Rose. Okay. Uh, so there's pros and cons to both. Um, I'm, a, those- I'm, I'm a big Martha fan. Um, you I are just, a Martha I, fan. I loved Martha. Martha was my okay. favorite companion, okay. and I and I could not stand Donna. Oh, uh, I know. So <laughs> what happened is um, my Doctor Who podcast is um, we started at the Capaldi era. And so then what what my buddy Charles and I do is then we go back to classic episodes and the others and we just so when it's not current, we we do a classic episode or a modern episode. And I will tell you, and I've been very vocal um, when I first binged it, you know, I I had the CDs. I watched Eccleson. I watched all of Tenet and Matt Smith was the first one that I watched every week. And um, I now. I now adore Donna. I, I understand what <laughs> Catherine Kate's doing. I apologize to the universe that I did not understand her. You know, um, she just, the more I see her, the more I just really appreciate that performance and that character. So yeah, yeah. All right, all right. I, I yeah. like the way that story ended. <laughs> yeah, I do. I just, I do. I love it. Yeah. And so, yes, we could, we could have you talk about that. And I would love to hear your thoughts on Jody. Once you get up to the modern. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah I got to get there. I got to work. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad the kids are watching it. I will cut that out. Um, but I may, but I will probably, I will insert that as in my, um, my post edit. This I, after my closing theme, this will be the post, you know, the little, I, I like to do that sometimes. 